I'm still saying Happy Easter. This is Father Norm Douglas, pastor of St. Vincent de Paul Parish, Akron, Ohio. As I may have mentioned before, and some of you probably already know, in the Catholic Christian community, we see Easter as a 50-day season, going from Easter Sunday, the, the experience of the risen Lord, all the way to Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit comes upon the disciples and calls them to carry on the mission that Jesus gave them, that's still being carried on with the help of the Holy Spirit today. I want to mention another resurrection story that's in the gospel. And part of the reason I want to mention it is because it's not only is Easter a 50-day season, but maybe we need to have an Easter attitude about our faith and about what we deal with in the world all year long. So this story, a lot of you know it. I'm going to sum it up briefly. It's called The, the Disciples on the Road to Emmaus. And uh, you can read it in chapter 24 of Luke's Gospel, but let me just capsulize some of it. These two disciples are leaving Jerusalem because they, they saw Jesus was crucified there. They're saddened. They're talking to each other about this. They were hoping he was the Messiah. They're, they're grief-stricken. They're, they're confused. Uh, uh, they're, they are disillusioned by thinking something good was going to come out of all of this. And so they're walking along, definitely leading Jerusalem because that's where all the pain was. And they are talking back and forth to each other, which is a good thing. On our journey, sometimes we need to commiserate. We need to share with one another when there's hurt, there's loss, there's fear, there's pain. There's much of that even in the world today and in people's personal lives. Then someone comes along in their midst and starts to talk to them. And it's Jesus. They don't know it yet. But Jesus comes to them and he begins to ask them questions. Hey, what are you talking about along the way? Uh, now, you know, Jesus already knew. Why did he even bring them up? And of course, what Jesus did for them and what we're reminded Jesus wants to do for us, he wants us in prayer, in conversation with each other, because in some way we can be Jesus for one another and with him in prayer uh, to really tell him what's going on. You know, sometimes we think prayer has to be praise you, God, love you, God, everything positive, everything glorifying God. There's a place for that. But there's a place for being real with the Lord if we're going through struggles and hurts and pain. Can you imagine those people in Ukraine, as we've often mentioned, or just people in troubled situations in their home? I know I used to emphasize the importance of positive mental attitude, keep a positive spirit, always hallelujah people. And, and again, there's a place for that. However, I think what I've realized more than ever, especially as I've gotten older, no, you can't always, nor should you always have a positive mental attitude. These disciples, uh, you know, leaving Jerusalem and going to Emmaus, they had every reason to be down and out, as we do in many of our circumstances. The key may not be positive mental attitude, but the key may be resilience. What helps us get back up again when we're down, when we're sad, when we're in great pain, when we're ex experiencing fear. With these disciples, as Luke reminded us, it was Jesus coming along. They didn't know it. Jesus is with us in our journey, and maybe we don't know it. And sometimes simply talking to him about what we're feeling, what we're going through. And he asked some more questions to get them to talk further. Often we think of, of prayer as certainly as listening to God, uh, but also uh, being able to share with him uh, what's uh, genuine, authentic feelings. So they did that, and then Jesus help them to better understand, he started to interpretate, interpret the scriptures with them to let them see that, hey, scripture said he was going to suffer. He was going to be crucified. He was going to die. Scripture was not some Pollyanna positive vision of everything. Scripture also said that through that, Jesus Christ would ultimately be raised up and live again. And so that reminder, uh, there's, there's death, but it's death and resurrection. And so he tells this to the disciples, and then they're going to go, go into a place where they're going to stay. And this Jesus, that they don't know it's Jesus, he's making some sense to them, giving them a measure of hope. Hope is a very important virtue, not optimism that everything's always going to be wonderful, but hope that whatever happens, God will see us through. 
They invite him to stay with them. He does. They break bread. Uh, and then they recognize Jesus. Just like, again, the story is for us. We're those disciples that maybe when we go through a lot, try to be open, knowing there's sadness and pain, but believing there's a presence there that says, I'm with you. I'm the presence that cares. I will see you through. I will see others in their pain through in this life and ultimately even one day in eternal life. So for all of us, Easter is a reality, hopefully, uh, and a reality that reminds us that there's loss, there's pain, there's grief. There's a Savior who walks with us. There's a Savior who listens to us and wants to make a difference and who wants to pick us back up and help us be resilient because our ultimate hope is in Jesus Christ and our ultimate hope is in His saving grace in this life and beyond to eternal life. Let's all take a moment and, and just try to find in our hearts that sense of a God who's saying, I have always been with you and I always will be. God bless. Take a moment and see what you need to hear in all of this.